me. Hello. Hiya, how are you doing? Good, how are you? All good, all good. How's your day been, okay? Oh, yes. Just been hanging out. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll give it a couple of minutes until nine here, four there, give people a chance to join and then we'll crack on. Sounds good. Hi, little wolf. Hi. Good to see you join. So, Novia said, um, sorry, not, I keep saying Novia, Katie, I keep getting confused. <laughs> Either way, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're just, um, we'll, we'll run through the uh, our TPM questions, uh -huh. picked out some community questions. Sure. And then we'll open it up to anybody who's listening to ask any more questions. Sounds good. Yeah. That, day, that daylight savings time thing um <laughs> would have brought, would have mucked this up, wouldn't it? Really? <laughs> I think Cynthia jumped on that um this afternoon. It's like, oh, yes. I think there's daylight savings time now. Would have been fun. I don't even know which one we're in, to be honest. <laughs> I don't really think daylight don't time or standard time or who knows. Yeah, and I don't see the point in it. I mean, what's the point in changing the time? Oh, I don't see a point either. It, I think it's dumb. <laughs> it just confuses people. There we go. So we'll get started, and as we, as people join, they can pick up where we are. So, um, welcome to. Episode two of Ask a VP, um, and today we are joined by Novi, um, also known as Katie. Welcome, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Did you, the important question? Did you listen to last week's to find out what's going to happen? I did actually. Yes. <laughs> good, good. So yeah, we'll basically we'll run through some questions from the from the TPM team. Mm -hmm. Um, I've got some community questions that people have asked on the teaser post this week, and then we'll open it up to anybody who is listening for any more questions. So, mm -hmm. first question, how long have you been gaming? Um, and of that time you've been gaming, what is your favourite game of all time? <laughs> um, I don't know, I, actually. I think it was, I mean, it's been a long time, but probably... <laughs> uh, I don't know, like 10 years old. The first, well, yeah. no, I guess the first thing I had was a Game Gear. I don't know if anybody had a Sega Game Gear. <laughs> it was a giant yeah, yeah, handheld brick. <laughs> <laughs> it probably weighed like five or six pounds. <laughs> it was so heavy. Um, but then I got, you know, an N64 and yeah, I've had a lot of consoles through my life. What? But I didn't really get totally into gaming until probably the 360 um, when I was in college. That's really when I got yeah. more into it. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have a favorite game of all time. I've never had just one game that's my favorite. I have a bunch of games that I really like. Um, so what, what what's your what's your top three then? What's uh, if you have to pick a couple, which you, like your comfort games or games you go back to? Well, probably what, what Zelda, uh, Ocarina of Time. That's definitely up there. Um, that's sick. I love that's that sick. one. Um, Skyrim. I mean, I always love Skyrim. That was kind of really what got me into RPGs. Um, I love The Witcher. That's a really good one too. Yeah. Um, and then I guess Rocket League, honestly, that has to be up there. <laughs> I spent thousands of hours in that game, uh, although I've kind of fallen off of it lately. But yeah, I do love that game See, too. I've never played Rocket. I've never played Rocket League. Oh my gosh, it's so fun! So is it basically just football with cars? Yeah, pretty much, and you fly around and <laughs> drive up the walls. Yeah, I was never. Much 
So I'm not really good at driving or football, so I think I'd be quite bad at that <laughs> Well, game. I wasn't good at it first. But the thing about that game <laughs> is that, like, no matter what level you are, it's still fun. Like, even if you're horrible, yeah. like, you're still having fun doing it. Unlike, I don't know, I feel like Call of Duty, it's like, unless you're actually winning, it's not really that fun. But that's just me, yeah. so I don't know. Yeah, those, those sort of party games are good, aren't they? Like you said, you just you just go there to have fun with your mates, mm-hmm. don't you? Or on your own, or however. Oh, yeah. It is really good. Mm-hmm. So the consoles you listed, you've obviously 360, Game Gear, N64, and bits and pieces. What What's kind of your standout con- console? Have you, are you, have you got a PS5 now? Have you got an Xbox Series X or S? What do you play on at the moment? Oh, I've got everything. I've got the PS5, I've got the Series X, and I have a Switch. Um yeah. <laughs> which, which, which one do you find you play the most? Oh, I play Xbox the most, for sure. I play everything on Xbox yeah. if I can. I have the PS5. Yeah. Well, I mean, I want it, but I have it because there's a you know ton of exclusives on PlayStation that I want to play. Um, but basically, yeah. if it's cross-platform, I'll play it on Xbox. And how do you find the performance in, like from you know speed or graphics that kind of thing between the series x and the ps5 uh it's basically the same that much difference? honestly i yeah. don't i don't think it's that much difference what i just like the controller better on xbox yeah and that's kind of where i started yeah. was xbox so that's just sort of what i'm more familiar with and um at the time like you know that's where all my friends were on the xbox and so that's sort of just where i go naturally now um yeah, but yeah, I think I think that probably is the hardest thing when you change consoles, getting used to the controller, isn't it? Oh yeah, no, I can't. It's so difficult. I can't do those analog sticks. They're they're awful. <laughs> I'm sorry, but they're I, awful. I did, I did. <laughs> no, I, I I feel you there because I've I've recently come from a Series S um, to a PS5, uh-huh. and when I first picked up the DualSense controller, I mean, I love it now because <laughs> I've got used to it. But when I first picked it up, it, it felt so alien to oh, me. Yeah. And it, it, I was so used to the positioning of the Xbox controller. But, you know, I think they're much of a muchness. Well, if you play on most, you get used to it, don't you? Yes. Well, and didn't they have – didn't PlayStation come out with a pro controller that had the Xbox set up? I think they did, didn't they, Which somewhere? just to me proves that it's did. the better one. <laughs> yeah. They're like, well, if you're real serious, you want it in this orientation. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> so you've obviously had a lot of consoles. Mm-hmm. Um, you play across platforms. Mm-hmm. What got you into virtual photography? Obviously, a lot of people game to start off with. What what drew you to virtual photography in the first place? I honestly don't know. I I looked back <laughs> to see which game, you know, was the earliest I captured and it was Uncharted Four was the first oh, actual yeah. photo mode that I did anything in. And and then I guess it would be odd uh, uh, no, uh Assassin's Creed Origins was after that, I think. Um yeah. but I don't know why. I have no idea, honestly. I and you just, I tried to you think just picked it yeah. up. Found it. <laughs> I was just like I guess I just tried it out and was like, hey this is fun. And yeah, I don't know. The rest of history. I don't know why I got into it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite photo mode? Uh, well, I mean, if you're talking one about that... one that's like the best one, honestly, mm. like Bound has one of the best photo modes. See, I've not played Bound. So is that is it? Is it got quite a lot of settings? Is it quite simple? It's it's got a lot of settings. It's just very, um. It has a lot of freedom to it, I guess. Um, yeah. But without being overly complicated. Like, I feel like Days yeah. Gone had a lot of freedom, but it was a bit almost too much, at least for me, because um, I'm not good mm. with RGB channels. <laughs> I couldn't do anything <laughs> with those. But, yeah, I think to start off with, it's a lot of guesswork, isn't it, is. with that, and to play around in bits and pieces. I mean, it kind of ties into, we got asked a question by Megaforce on, um, on Twitter. And it kind of ties in with what we're talking uh-huh. about. He says he's asked, "What standardized features or options would you add to a photo mode, 
or, and what would you consider a gold standard when it comes to photo mode? So you mentioned there, obviously, Bound mm-hmm. has good photo mode. I think we've discussed on other episodes, and I think everybody's discussed across Twitter about, you know, Insomniac mm-hmm. and God of War's reason of photo mode, but we won't get back into that one. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, you say Bound has obviously got everything you need to do what you need to do. Would you consider that from your perspective as a gold standard? Or is it just something you feel comfortable with? I I don't know if any photo mode has a gold standard because I feel like, you know, they all have something that I want from it, but not every, yeah. not one photo mode has everything that I want, unfortunately. Because even Bound, you know, they don't have the light system that Insomniac has, and I love that thing. Oh, well, it's brilliant, That's isn't just, it? Absolutely. I wish brilliant. that was in every photo mode. I know, I know. I think you know that's that's the kind of you know. I think when a lot of people talk about gold standard, is what would you take? What would you take from a photo mode and replicate across all the other photo modes and Mm -hmm. with Insomniacs? And and we've seen it in the the Last of Us Part One where they bore the lights over. It's just those extra settings that give us more freedom, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And what I mean, do you use all the features or do you just have your go to things that you always tweak? So everybody has a style and a kind of way they set up their photos and edit them. Do you go like natural? Do you just line it up and no filters or anything? Uh, I'm pretty simple with it, I would say. I don't generally use a lot of the features, a lot of the filters, I just don't really like unless it's like there's a, a warm one and I want to add some temperature to the picture or something like that yeah. um i usually i don't do much um and that's i like assassin's creed the photo mode um in the last yeah. couple games um because they're they're they have what i want but not overly excessive i guess yeah they're not overly complicated are they? they're quite yeah. simple but have the basic tools you know they have your free cam, which is with a pretty good range. Um, they've got your your zoom, which is pretty good zoom. And I love that it's a free zoom. I hate the slider zooms that run on ticks. I hate those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you have the free focus as well, because you can just focus on any part of the picture. Okay. Um, you don't have to use that slider again, because inevitably, you know, your focus is like right in between two of them. Yeah, it's just always what happens. I think that's when we're talking about what you would bring over to the photo. And I think the automatic focus, I know obviously Assassin's Creed has it where you can move it around. I know Ken mm-hmm. Average of Spirits has it as well. And there's probably other photo modes that have it. But yeah, the slider for me, you know, I'm not going to pretend that my eyesight is perfect. <laughs> the amount of shots <laughs> that I take, which look like I focused on the right thing, and then I haven't. Oh, if you yeah. can just pinpoint it on it, like in those games it just makes Mm -hmm. it so much easier doesn't it yes yes it does i've definitely taken pictures where it's not actually in focus (laughs) i'm just like (laughs) and then you find out you know a week later when you're trying to edit the thing you're like oh well i guess that's unusable (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so so you you just touched there when you get when you edit a picture so do you do a lot of editing or do you just do basic well i mean it just depends. Um, I don't try to like change the image, I guess. Um, yeah. More, I don't know, optimize the image, I guess would be a good word for it. Um, but it just depends. Like some don't need much at all. Um, yeah. and, then, and then you have red dead shots that <laughs> need a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, I've just checked the comments and obviously you've been talking about Bound. Bound is getting uh-huh. a lot of love on the comments. I'm thinking oh, yeah. I'm gonna have to pick this up and give it a go. Oh yeah, and it—I mean, it's a short game, so it's not. Yeah. You know, it won't take you too long. <laughs> I'll pick it up and see what I think of it. Yeah. So with with the editing, we've also been asked by Savior seventy six on Twitter. Have you got any tips you, on give? Well, I'll start again. <laughs> what tips would you give on using editing tools for f- VP finishes? So I know there's there's lots of editing apps. Lots of uh-huh. people have different ways. Is there? And a lot of people are just starting out fresh. Mm-hmm. People maybe don't get involved in editing. Is there any tips that you give anybody on editing? Any 
kind of things to do, not to do that you've learned by when you do your editing? Um, well, I mean, I use Photoshop um, just because that's what I've always used. And that's, that is not to say that I'm an expert by any means. Basically, everything I know about it is just what I've learned through trial and error. Um, so, but I think one thing I've definitely learned is not to overdo it because I definitely look back at some of my older edits and I'm just like, Ugh, what was I thinking there? In fact, if I repost something, um, a lot of times I'll re-edit it again because I just hate how it looks. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I'll tell you on that one. But yeah, I mean, I used to, I would over brighten, I would over contrast, I would over saturate. And I think you just, you have to pull back just a little bit. Um, it's made harder just, nowadays, isn't it, as well, where, because people, whether people had it on their laptops or on their phones, you know, you can adjust your screen brightnesses. So mm-hmm. the effect that you're going for doesn't always carry across to, other screens and I think the amount of things I've tried to post on Twitter which when I'm in my editing app looks mm-hmm. perfect and I go to post it on Twitter and like hmm, that looks a bit darker or oh yeah it doesn't look right it's Absolutely. yeah it's, it's a tricky one tricky one yeah Stuff. and I I actually end up editing them twice because I, I edit on my computer um and then I'll transfer them to my phone yeah. And basically do a quick edit again on my phone because it doesn't look right anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you, do you, are you a bit of a perfectionist? Uh, yeah, but not to the extent where I would spend a ton of time on it. Yeah. I'm kind of like, eh, well, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you a kind of like couple of minutes tops? If it takes any longer than that, let's not bother. Yeah, I mean, honestly, some edits, it's just like, it'll take me 30 seconds to edit. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, with red dead shots, uh, those will take me longer, usually because you have to remove so much vignette. But um, yeah, yeah, that that is really annoying in those shots, isn't it? From red dead, it's so annoying. I don't understand it. It's weird. I mean, I love using it as an edit editing tool, but when it's there already, and you have to try and remove it, yeah. I'm oh, not yeah. Fan. oh, that's a big pet peeve of mine. Is when there's a vignette slider on photo modes. But yeah. there's already a vignette on there, and you're like, okay, <laughs> well, how do I remove it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so if any, so if any uh, developers are going to be listening to this, one tip: don't have that effect on already. If you're going to have the slider in your photo mode. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Or have it go negative. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, do you find a lot of your shots are uh, you, you go into the game looking for a shot, or is it spontaneous? Do you just something catches your eye and you take the picture or do you have a shot in mind that you're going for? When you're uh, definitely spontaneous. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm just like running along doing whatever. And then I see a shot and then stop and take it. And I mean, every now and then I'll be like, Oh, you know, it'd be really cool to get a shot with this or with that. Um, but like 99% of my shots are just me running along yeah. and I see something cool or I see some cool lighting or something. And... and I think that's where a lot of really cool shots come from, isn't it? It's that, that it literally catches your eye and you capture that moment. I think mm-hmm. if you plan it too much, like what we're saying about editing, sometimes if you plan it too much, it can look too forced and kind of have the opposite effect of what you want. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. But yeah, I'm with you spon- spontaneous shots all the way. Yeah, I I have to be playing the game, if that makes sense. Like, I can't just go into a game with the aim of taking pictures. Yeah. I have to be, even if it's like, you know, oh, i got to get all these collectibles now or something. I have to be doing (laughs) something in the game. Yeah. Um, And do you do it on your first playthrough? Are you one of these people who plays the game first to play the game and then play through it again to take shots? Or are you just, I'm just going to take shots whenever, wherever? No, I just take them whenever. <laughs> I yeah. can't. I can't hold back the first time around. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely, I'm with you on that one. And do you ever, do you ever find yourself getting like a creative block, or you're playing a game and you just, you just can't find a shot or get a shot? And if you do, what what do you do to kind of like get out of that that way of thinking or that? 
Well, I mean, that's the thing is like because they're just spontaneous. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I really get creative blocks because I'm not yeah. trying to do anything. Like yeah. if, if I don't, I can play for a week and I don't take a shot and that's fine. Like I'm just, you know, if I don't see yeah. anything, I don't care. I just won't take yeah. anything. But it's a good way to be. Yeah, I just, I just do it as it comes to me, I guess. Well, it's obviously working for you because I know um, we briefly touched on this when we were messaging back and forwards. You won some competitions. <laughs> so um, you've had some notable wins on Red Bull Capture Point, which I think was uh-huh. 2021. 20, yeah, it would have been 21. Mm-hmm. And then Ubisoft uh, last year. Mm-hmm. I mean, what can you tell us about that experience? I mean, obviously, it's, you know, that is massive. Um, yeah, that was that was really cool. Um, I mean, there wasn't much experience per se with the Red Bull mm-hmm. one because it was just you know you sort of just won the prizes. At that time, yeah. it wasn't the. I mean, they had the gallery, but you didn't win the prize to go there at the time. Um, so so we'll- you know, it was really cool to be featured, but I didn't get to experience that per se. Um, you should have held on to that shot till the year after, and you could have gone to New York. <laughs> Apparently. Well, I got to go to New York, like, I think it was a week before the other one. Yeah. Before the Red Bull one this last yeah. year. Um, cool. But, yeah, so with the Ubisoft one, um, so we won, I guess we won a laptop. We won the trip to New York, uh, a print, and then I think it was a year of Ubisoft Plus. But obviously the trip to New York was the big part. Um, And that was so cool. I've never been to New York and that was, that was so much fun. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. That was, that was definitely something I'll remember the rest of my life. Did you find it hard to choose the shots you put in or was it like when you're taking shots, was it just spontaneous? You just thought, I'll just put these ones in, see how they do. Or did you have to really narrow it down on what you're going to put in the competitions? It was very hard. Mainly yeah. because I have so many shots from Ubisoft games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I have almost 5,000 in the last Assassin's Creed alone. Whoa. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. But actually, the one that... Well, there was actually two that won, technically. The big one was mm. the... It was like a blue flower. Um, and that's one that I actually took specifically for that competition... Um, I was trying to, I just wanted something new in there because all the other ones are just ones I had taken already. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to run around and see if I can find anything interesting. And I came across that one flower and started taking a bunch of pictures. And then I was playing with sliders and um, bumped the saturation up a a lot. And because that flower has so many different colors in it, um, changing the temperature in the tent really affected it. Yeah. And so I, I have, like, a reel of shots of that flower. I have, like, 20 pictures of that flower. Um, and as soon as I took that picture, I was like, that's the one. And ironically, yeah. that's the one that won. <laughs> so so what you're saying is you take spontaneous shots, and the one time you took a planned shot, you won a massive competition. <laughs> well, it wasn't planned. It was planned <laughs> to go in and take pictures. That one shot yeah. itself wasn't planned. Yeah, I just yeah. ran around and found – I saw that flower – and was like, oh, that's cool. I bet I could get a cool shot of that. Um, cool. So it was half really planned. <laughs> so do you, yeah. do you find, do you, do you have to enter a lot of the, I mean, obviously there's quite a few competitions to go on. Um, oh, for, yeah. Uh, now. Did you, um, do you go in for all of them? Did you go in for the VP awards? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, but <laughs> mine were nowhere near as good as the ones that won. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, this, the standard of the shots in the VP awards this year was, Immense, immense. I instantly, after I submitted mine, just, you know, you look at some of the other ones being put and they say, okay, yeah, I know I'm not going to win. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I was like, well, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's, re- you know, it's really good that the d- developers, publishers, and I oh, the fourth focus in the VP Awards that there are these things um, for us to go for. I think it kind of, it helped not helps boost our creativity, but like you're saying there, you went in looking for a certain shot, Mm -hmm. taking a certain shot. 
you know, the feeling you've had from winning that, you know, it's such a good thing that it's this kind of medium is being recognized to the point where these big companies are doing these things for it. And I, you know, almost that was, let's mm-hmm. get lots more competitions. Brilliant. Yeah. There, there are a ton out there for sure. So looking through your, uh, your feed on Twitter, you've got quite a lot of landscape shots and environment shots. Mm-hmm. There's the odd portrait shot dotted around. Mm-hmm. What what kind of are you drawn to landscape shots? Is it just that because you're doing a lot of spontaneous, you just literally just snap what you're looking at, or do you? Mm-hmm. Is it just the style you fall into? That's asked by Shinobi um, on Twitter. It's um, it's sort of both, I guess. That's just sort of where I fall um, naturally. I just like I like that you know beautiful landscape shot. Um, and like you said, it's a lot of, oh, look at that over there. I want to take a picture of that. Um, and taking portrait shots is just harder, <laughs> quite frankly. <laughs> Coming from a, from a portrait VP, it's hard. It's, <laughs> it's hard. harder. The amount that hits you know, the camera the, <laughs> And it's a lot easier to get away with a landscape, I think, graphically. I mean, characters are so detailed nowadays, but you always get that. You know, all their hair's going through their head now, and oh, that shadow isn't quite right. But on a landscape, it's not as noticeable, yeah. I think. So a lot of times I'll go in to take a portrait, and I'm just like, eh, I don't really like how that looks. It's just not right. Like, I have yeah. some of Arthur Morgan in Red Dead that it's like the the shadow from the hat isn't right. And you're just like, well, that kind of ruins the whole thing. So yeah. Uh, definitely, I think, and like I said, clipping, clipping on portraits is mm-hmm. it's the bane of my life. <laughs> You've got a perfect portrait lined up, and then the hair goes right through their cheek and out of their nose. It just oh yeah, it's not good. But then people also use that to their advantage when you see some Horizon Forbidden West shots with um Aloy's hair. You know, it it, it can use it oh, to your yeah. advantage. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think I might have to take your advice and if i can't get a portrait then just start snapping some landscapes <laughs> it's Reduce easier I'm telling you. <laughs> so what um what games that are coming out this year or coming up are you looking forward to playing and capturing is there any that stand out for you that you're really waiting for uh well definitely spider-man 2 that's gonna be fantastic obviously um, i mean i'm assuming it's gonna be the same photo mode Oh, hey, they might have some surprises for us. <laughs> or at the very least, it won't be any less than this photo mode, I sure hope. <laughs> um, uh, obviously, the next Assassin's Creed. Um, so, yeah, when's Mirage out? Mirage is out in... I think it's late this year. Yeah. Or supposedly. I mean, games always get delayed, so who knows. But Because they're scanning it back this time, aren't they? They're scanning it back to one kind of in large location rather than a yeah massive open world. it's going to be your more classic uh assassin's creed i guess which i think is a good solution to that issue is just release one game that's like that and then release another game that's a big rpg yeah and i think i think you know the, the good thing well the good thing or the bad thing about assassin's creed is several times they've reinvented franchise or try to reinvent the franchise whether it's been for better or for worse mm-hmm. and i think when when they announced mirage i think a lot of the community who like those games are like yes thank you yeah you know, a lot of people have been saying that i mean as as good as origins odyssey and valhalla are it was it's a major step away from kind of like the core core mechanics and the core gameplay from assassin's creed wasn't it it is yeah but they are awesome games, just in case uh, Ubisoft are listening. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Oh, I definitely like both. Because um, yeah. Brotherhood is one of my favorites, but I also love the new ones. I think they're just... I mean, but I love big RPGs, so that's kind of easy for me to fall into that. Yeah. Um, Did you say the Origins out of the latest trilogy is your favorite? See, that's hard. Because I liked origins um but then i liked the setting better in odyssey but i thought the combat was worse 
And then I think the combat is actually the best in Valhalla, but the setting is kind of eh. Yeah, I agree on that. The UK is pretty meh. <laughs> Li- living in the UK. I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful <laughs> in its own way, but it's not Greece. <laughs> it's it's not. And the, when they announced it was going to be in the UK, I was thinking, <laughs> I, I live here. I know, I know what it's like. It's not exactly the most exciting place to <laughs> be running around and doing stuff. But yeah, it, it's a beautiful game. But Greece in Odyssey is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Oh, yeah. And the DLC yeah. I thought was amazing in that game too. I think that was the best DLC for sure. Yeah, because they done the was it Legacy of First Blade and then Fates of Atlantis. Uh yeah, so it was it was basically all three uh afterlifes. Is that is that what it is? Yeah, I guess yeah. That, Atlantis yeah, wasn't really yeah. afterlife, but Yeah. See I've played I played the I played oh, I can't remember what the names of the different afterlives were. You've got, is it Elysium? Yeah, Elysium, the Underworld, and then yeah, um, Atlantis. Yeah. See, I never got to the Atlantis part. That's the bit I wanted oh, to get to. Oh, that's the best I just, one. <laughs> I know, I know, but I got to the Underworld, and I just, to be honest, I got a little bit bored. Yeah, but, it, it has its own aesthetic. It's just a little, it can be overbearing a little bit. Yeah, exactly. No, they're absolutely brilliant games, brilliant games. Mm-hmm. So, um, with lots more people starting to do VP, um, what one bit of advice or what advice would you give people just starting? Because obviously, there's a lot of it's probably a lot of pressure when they sit when somebody new to VP sees a lot of these shots, they're only just starting. Mm-hmm. What, what advice would you give a new VP from anything that you've learned in your time gaming and doing virtual photography? Uh, well, I mean, I know people say this all the time, but basically you have to do it for yourself first. Um, if you're heading into this thinking, oh, I'm going to get all these likes, I'm going to get all the attention from the devs. That's not necessarily going to happen, especially right at first. Yeah. Like you kind of have to just stick with it. Um, and you have to enjoy it. Like if you're not enjoying it, then then there's no point in doing it. And nobody else is going to enjoy it if you're not enjoying it, I feel like. Um, exactly. I think there's there's so much talk around the numbers, you know, like you said, the likes, the followers, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But you can you can see when you're looking at your feeds and things that are on there, you can see people who love it and their passion is in their shots over people who are just posting shots just for the likes. Mm-hmm. I think, you, like you said, you've got to be in it for you. If you're not happy, it's going to show. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. So we've done our questions. I think we've done the community <laughs> questions. So now is the time when it can be really good or really embarrassing if nobody <laughs> wants to ask a question. So I'm going to open it up to our listeners who are listening live. If you've got a question for JT, um, send over a request to speak. I'll... Uh, confirm you can speak and then ask your question away don't be shy um i know jack had one i think jack's question which he popped in the comments we've covered yes he said how did it feel to win both red bull and ubisoft obviously super amazing oh yes Um, yeah do you try to catch a new image or do you go with an old favorite so i think we've kind of touched on that one as well a bit of both have we got anybody who wants to ask a question? Come on, don't be shy. Sure. <laughs> Cynthia, I know you're not going to let me down. You would have thought of a question. No. Well. Well. We've obviously covered everything that everybody wanted to find out about you. Apparently. In our, in our chat so far, which is all good. Well, thanks for your time, Katie. It's been really good speaking to you, getting to know a little bit more about you, your VP, and your experience. Yeah. Um, it was great to be here. No problem. We'll uh, we'll see you bits and pieces on Twitter. Um, we will post the link to 
this episode on Spotify and for your podcast player tomorrow or listen again on the space. And again, Katie, thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. Have a good rest of your day. Um, and we'll catch no up problem. with you soon. All right. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Take care. You too. No, maybe if you're still there, we've just had a request for a question. Yeah, sure. We've got Bianca. Oh, Bianca, I knew you wouldn't let me down. <laughs> Bianca, you are live. What question have you got for Novi or Katie? Slash. Oh. I think. Let me just invite her to speak. It's going to be one of those awkward moments where she pressed the wrong button. Hello, Bianca. Hi, Bianca. No, it seemed to be a few technical difficulties. So once again, okay. thanks, Katie. Um, we'll catch up soon. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, you do. Thanks a lot. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.